Hi everyone, it's Miss Leah again, and we are back with L Jam Storytime. Today's book is called Our Little Mushroom, a story of Franz Schubert and his friends. Written by Caldecott Medal, Medal winner, Emily Arnold McCauley. Here we go. Our friend Franz auditioned for the Emperor's Choir School when he was 11. He barely spoke a word, but he sang like an angel. When we burst into applause, Franz's face turned red as a rose. We students called him Schwammo, our little mushroom. He was very small and quite round. His talent amazed us, but he was so shy and so absent-minded, often forgetting his cap, his homework, or his lunch. In Vienna, everyone loved music. The Schubert family had a string quartet. Franz played violin and viola. He longed for a piano, but the Schuberts couldn't afford one. We found a piano warehouse, and that's where Franz, be Franz practiced. He was already composing. By the time he was 16, Franz had written several hundred compositions, operas, symphonies, quartets, masses, chamber works, but most of all, songs. They simply poured out of him. He couldn't afford music paper, so Joseph bought it for him. Franz told his father he wanted to become a professional musician. It's too hard, you'll starve, Herr Schubert shouted. He ran a school in their home, and he made Franz teach the first grade. Our friend tried to write songs while swarms of six-year-olds climbed all over him. It was mayhem. There was never a more passionate composer. We couldn't bear to see his gift wasted. Don't visit Franz again, Herr Schubert ordered us. You are a terrible influence. We made a vow we would all help him devote himself to music. He was the most talented of us all. We sent Franz a message. Come with us. Together we will live for art. We won't let you starve. Some of us grew up to be poets. Others were painters and one a playwright. Most of us earned small salaries in government offices, but we lived for our art. We kept telling Franz he, he could live for his music. And so, after many months, Franz left his father's school. He needed a place to sleep. Moritz's mother offered her spare room, but Franz, Franz's habit of composing into the wee hours disturbed her. He moved to Johann's and then to a rooming house kept by the other Franz's mother, Frau Sanssouci. He wore his clothes and eyeglasses to sleep so he could jump right out of bed and compose in the morning. Before long, Franz became, began setting our poems to music. Our words suddenly gained astonishing power when they became songs. Some were joyful and some mysteriously sad. All of his melodies were achingly beautiful, but only we heard them. Gradually, we realized his father was right. A composer had to be supported by a rich patron. A concert could attract the patron, but concerts cost a lot of money. We bragged about Franz's beautiful melodies to everyone. Count Esterhazy was impressed and invited him to his country estate to give piano lessons to the talented Esterhazy sisters. Franz told us that he was living like a god, even though 40 geese were honking outside his room and he, could, he couldn't hear himself speak. The piano duets he composed for the girls were sublime. When Franz came back to Vienna, he moved in with Edward. Their room was so small, 
they had to take turns working. Franz would hold e entire compositions in his head and then when it was his turn at the desk, write them down as fast as he could. We friends kept asking ourselves, what more could we do to make Franz's splendid music known to the rest of Vienna? Then we had a stupendous idea. We would hold little concerts of Franz's music in people's houses. They wouldn't cost anything. We made up a name, Schubertiad, a Schubertiad. Twenty people came to the first one. Franz played the piano and Yosef sang. After the concert, there was feasting and dancing. We played charades and read each other's poems. It was a glorious evening. Forty people came to the next Schubertiad. To the following one, more than 100. In good weather, we had picnics and games outside after the music. Soon, the tide was turning for our little mushroom. Our circle of friends was swelling. Franz was becoming famous. A hotel played Schubert songs on its mechanical clock. Publishers printed his music. He was asked to compose for churches, birthday parties, and plays. In 1827, Franz's lifelong idol, Ludwig van Beethoven, died. Franz was picked to carry one of the torches in the long funeral procession. Who will stand beside Beethoven? One of the mourners asked sadly. Franz will, we assured him. We were certain his music too was immortal. But Franz had been hiding a secret from us. He was ill. Sometimes he couldn't get out of bed. Astonishingly, the flow of glorious music increased. We friends realized we mustn't wait any longer. We pulled our money and hired a theater so that Franz could finally have a public concert. Franz selected the program and asked the finest musicians to perform with him. They all accepted. When the box office opened, tickets flew. By the day of the concert, March 26, 1828, the theater was sold out. His father and all his family were there. Afterward, the audience leaped to his feet, nearly delirious with joy. Franz was so shy, we had to drag him out to take a bow, followed by many more bows. There were stories in newspapers as far away as Berlin. Beethoven was a genius. Schubert is a miracle, wrote one critic. Franz knew he might not he might never be well again. He said to us, nothing can make me forget the happy sweet hours I spent with you. He often seemed his old merry self. So when he failed to attend a party, we worried. In the fall of 1828, Franz's doctor ordered him to go to his brother's house and stay in bed. He never got up again. Weekly, he asked to hear Beethoven's string quartet number 14 and C sharp minor. Then he fell into a delirium. We heard him whisper, Beethoven is not here. On November 19, 1828, our little mushroom died. He was only 31. His brother told us he had composed 14 songs in his last weeks. They were dedicated to his friends. 
Despite our sorrow, we were proud that his ravishing, heartbreaking music no longer belonged to just us. Now it belongs to the world. The end. And this story is called Our Little Mushroom, a story of Franz Schubert and his friends, written by Caldecott, Caldecott Medal winner Emily Arnold McCauley. I really hope you enjoyed this story, and I will see you next time at LJAM Storytime. Bye!